But then think about it. you got called by Clive to write for Whitney, or did you have the track and then he said he wanted to? What how how does that the really Heartbreak Hotel? Because that's I love love the Faith and Kelly and oh, right? that's, that's it's just the that's an R and B right? And it yeah. and it, it is well, it's, it's five, not uh, yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying that you had these power singers who didn't bring too much power to it, so you could like. We could sing along because you know Whitney and Kelly could just take you up there, but they were like, "No, we're gonna keep it slow keep it cool. and faith." Yeah, well, faith we've always just, did. Yeah. Even on uh, "I Love Me Some Him" with Tony, Tony can go there too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Tony, we always were. We liked it a little, a little sexy, a little cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. that story is crazy. We wrote that story. That was actually we we, we signed with EMI Publishing and Big John, who was uh, an A and R person there. He's now head of the company. But he had this new writer. I got a brand new writer, and we love New Town. We have had so much success with New Town. Monica, Jojo, who was like oh, only yeah. twelve, we didn't leave get out. <laughs> um, you know, no one knew who he was. We loved him, and so this was a new writer. And we and her name was Tamara, and she came to the studio. It was her first session. And this girl writes Heartbreak Hotel in her first writing session. But I remember Connor being a big, big drummer. So this whole record was done. And I came in, I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to do a beat. Now I'll, I'll kind of let a little Timbaland thing going. Yeah. You know, <laughs> going crazy on this. So I just loved it so much. And um and we just went to see Clive and we had this record as one of all the records we had. But we kind of knew we had a hot one. <laughs> and so we went to Bungalow 8 one more time, and Wycliffe was there, and there's a big party going on. There was always <laughs> so many people there. And again, back to your point and, and what we talked about earlier, Clive, when you walked into a room, he paid full attention to you, even though mm-hmm. it's five days. And even though Wycliffe was sitting there, whatever, if the meeting now was over with Wycliffe or Prince or whatever, and it was social calling and no one knew, we got the same attention. He understood mm-hmm. songwriters, how important they are. They are the ones and producers that makes his machine go around. And he and is the king. Mm. No one touches Clive. You would break your angle for Clive, you know, without yeah. even understanding. But anyways, we played Heartbreak Hotel as the first song. And that, at that time, Larry Jackson, who's now head of Apple Music, instead, he was Clive's assistant. And um, that was just the... I mean, he Clyde just stopped the wagon. He's like, "What the fuck?" You know, he was like, <laughs> and he knew what he was about to say, and he said, "I think we should do that with Whitney Houston." And even though we had worked with Tupac and Tony Braxton and Beyonce, whatever, or, or Destiny's Child, Whitney, <laughs> it just. I just didn't get better. I mean, we were almost nervous. And funny enough, the same thing happened. L.A. Reid writes a call two days after, I want to do the song with TLC. Wow. And we had to say once again, no. because <laughs> And he got pissed off and uh, asked one more time and didn't talk to me for another two years. Oh. You know? <laughs> but how did he hear the song? Who, who's leaking it out? Because we have a match that just sends out songs. Are you leaving? Yeah. Okay. When are you going to be late? No. Okay. Uh, I love you. <laughs> Sorry, that was my son. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, so they'll send it out to different labels. Yeah, to yeah but, you know, and but then Clyde would always call in for meetings, which meant sometimes he would be a little bit behind because Clyde wanted to hear the songs in person. And also you had to bring the lyrics. He was obsessed with the lyrics. He would sit with, if you didn't bring the lyrics, he didn't want to hear the song. Okay, he had okay. to sing the lyrics and and you played him song so la had heard it in in theory before him and we had to turn him down again you know so it is so funny with the la anyways we're going crazy and he goes you're flying to new jersey oh new jersey okay because we you're going to record at whitney's house whitney and bobby had just bought a house (laughs) keep in mind this is after bodyguard she is on top of the world. She's just sold 33 million singles. Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> of I'll Always Love You. So we're flying to New York and we're at the Waldorf fancy stuff. <laughs> and again, Babyface is there, David Foster. We're all staying. And I keep seeing 
David Foster, maybe he's coming back every time they go to see him. We, we were waiting to go work with her. And uh, I was I said to Kenny, how did it go? He goes, see, I didn't get into the house. What? I didn't open the gate. I go, what? And he finally comes back today, like, we're leaving. And, and, and Faith is good luck. And I said, what's going on here? He goes, you'll find out. <laughs> Bobby and Whitney, they're, you, you're about to find out. So now it's our turn. So we drive to New Jersey, to this crazy rich area in New Jersey, with these mansions and this gate that's like four times as big as my house. <laughs> and all we heard was, Miss Houston is not ready to say, okay, back again. And we did that again, and again, and again, and again. And on the eighth time, now I'm just chilling in the car, eating, you know, <laughs> chips and stuff, and playing on my phone, and not even, barely had the equipment we needed, because, you know, we still back then needed a ton of equipment. And we're coming out, and I'm like, Miss Houston is not ready. Miss Houston is ready. Shit. <laughs> And the gate opens, and I'm like, oh my fucking God. Shit, did I did you bring that, Colin? Did you bring the meaty thing? Did you bring the you got the emails? Yeah, we have it. Okay. Shit. Okay. We go in. And I'm a little nervous. Even though I work with all these artists, I'm a little, I'm not gonna lie to you. And we get up to the house and Robin with like her sister. Yeah, Robin, yeah. We show you the studio. We walk into this crazy house. There are so many people. So it's his, her mom was there and Everybody's eating fried chicken, and I'm like, oh, great. It's like a Thanksgiving dinner almost, like whatever. And okay, let's go. I'm in them. It's just a lot of assistance, and someone running, oh, did we eat? Did you get her dress ready? And <laughs> it's like shit, and we're going to this room, amazing SL9000, brand new, like 120 channel. I've never seen a studio like this. Incredible. Wow. And so we're waiting for Whitney, and I, kind of an hour go by, so I go to Rob, and I said, you know, so where is Whitney? Is it like, upstairs or? She goes, honey, let me show you where Whitney is. Come with me. We walk out this huge house and I'm like at a golf course. And at the end of the golf course, there's a castle that's like bigger than your, and she goes, that's where Whitney is. So she bought two properties. One, the neighbor house was the studio. And then her castle was where Bobby and Whitney are. And we, she has barely said this before I see a golf cart coming. And I kid you not, Bobby and Whitney coming up in the golf cart. Bobby's holding a <laughs> ball of fantasy. The golf cart is swirling like this. <laughs> and Robin goes, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> go, oh, my sure God. I am. <laughs> so... Here comes Whitney Houston. And Bobby comes and says, what? Okay, we're going to do my album first. You know, I love you guys. I love that song you guys did with Tupac, whatever. I got some demos and whatever. <laughs> and then Clive said to me, Clive said, whatever happens, do not get Bobby on the record. He's on every song. Let's go, go play. Let's go. Let's get ready. And I'm like, well, okay. All right. You know, this okay. We go in and then Whitney came and I'm telling when I stood in front of her, I was little Mr. Carsten from Olpo in Denmark. <laughs> I, was I could not even look at it. I mean, it was fucking with me. Houston, man. And she goes, hey, how's it go, honey? And I'm like, <laughs> I love the song. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Bobby and, and her are just doing a lot. And she had what's called tea breaks. Where she would disappear in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else. Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> go. I I'm gonna stay stays in the studio. And she came out. And she goes, okay, let's go. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> and she goes in the booth. And she starts singing on top of Harvard Joe. And it is horrible. Oh, horrible. Wow. And the song is almost over. And I'm sitting in car and sitting, I go. I'm not fucking telling Whitney Houston it's not sounding good. And he goes, You think I'm gonna fucking tell? I'm not gonna tell. <laughs> no way I'm not telling Whitney it doesn't sound good. The song stops and it's just quiet. And you know, I just sit in the tongue Danish. She goes, What's going on? And she comes out and goes, Hey, listen, you wrote this song. I didn't write anything. It's your song. Just tell me what you how you want me to sing it. 
it's okay. And I said, well, you know, it's kind of like it bounces. It's like it's kind of like double tempo. She goes, I got it. She goes in, worst take. She goes, done. Bobby, let's go back to the house. He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm coming back to do the rap pot tomorrow. And I'll take it. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that channel. Hey, the somewhere in between. Or even loving us, on which I didn't miss you. Really. <laughs> What was it like growing up? It is a fish that had an impact on people. Four houses down. I ain't have a crew. I didn't get this one and that one. But that works for me, but just for me, I got that. No, 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 okay, you're okay. 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 You're